Welcome to Digital Asset News. Take a top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets. Yeah, I'm bringing on a bite-sized piece. Today, got some pretty interesting stuff. First up, 98% of CFOs say their hedge fund will have invested in Bitcoin by 2026. And this is the reason why I use the thumbnail that I use, because in my opinion, if you don't get in by this time, um, yeah, I think it's just too late. And you got to front run these guys before they snatch up all the value. On top of that, we'll take a look at uh, Voyager, uh, NASCAR driver Landon Castle to be paid in crypto in a deal with Voyager. And this, I think, is pretty big because we've already seen it as far as Bitcoin. Now we've got Voyager going after the national attention. And finally, we're going to take a look at a little story uh, about Titan Crypto and how uh, good old friend here, uh, Mark Cuban had uh, what many would say is a rug pull, but it's not an actual rug pull, but there's just a lot of liquidity that was lost and actually wiped out in iron finance. So I'm gonna explain exactly why this is not a rug pull, what actually happened. I'm gonna bring Alex Mascioli, who himself is a uh, pretty big liquidity provider for different exchanges. So we'll take a look at those stories, but first let's take a look what's going on in the market. So today it is uh, the 17th, something like that, uh, 11 o'clock a.m and uh, uh, El Paso, Texas time. And uh, things are looking pretty much the same and everything's just moving sideways. For me personally, I like these days because these are the days that I get to dollar cost average. And this is when everybody just loses interest in crypto. And I'm like, well, you know, that's okay. You can do what you wanna do. But for me, this is a gold mine because as things just move sideways and are boring and no one's paying attention, I just slowly dollar cost average. And before you know it, when we see these huge parabolic moves, everybody's like, oh, you're so lucky. It's not luck. Anyhow, uh, we've got a market cap of $1.6 trillion. So that's uh, looking uh, pretty decent. Bitcoin's below 39,000, actually 38,300. Ethereum 2300. Uh, they're all just sideways, nothing really big. Is there any big movers? 5% for Theta token. Awesome. I love that. Well, I'm, a, I'm a big Theta holder, T fuel holder as well. 1%. Algorand up 5%. 13% for Cosmos, great for interoperability, and of course, T-Fuel up 10%. Uh, remember, the T-Fuel uh, and Theta mainnet 3.0 launch is coming up at the end of this month. So I would definitely look at those two projects. And we've already covered that on this channel, Alex Mascioli's channel, and I uh, explain why I think uh, T-Fuel could potentially go to a dollar. This is not investment uh, advice, just investment opinion. And that's what's going on in the market. Let's jump into today's top story. So this was a really great story and I totally stole this uh, from the guys over at the Daily Crypto Byte, uh, Market Rebellion. Uh, if you don't follow these guys, they're great. It's uh, uh, John Najarian, it's CJ Reichel and uh, Monty, all from Market Rebellion. These guys are fantastic. They know a lot of things that are going on in the traditional side and the crypto market. And this is one of the things that John brought up and I just thought it would be uh, interesting to talk about front running these guys before they snatch up all the value. So what's going on here? Well, InterTrust Global, an international trust and corporate management company, pulled the chief or the CFO uh, of 100 hedge funds globally about their attention to actually purchase uh, crypto assets. And this is what's crazy. 98%, let me say it again, 98% responded that they expect their hedge funds to have invested about 7% of their assets by 2026. Why is this such a big deal? It's a big deal because if you would ask this same question in 2017, you would have been laughed at for the, for the vast majority because people don't, they're like, that is just nerd money. That is just money on the internet that no one really is gonna care for. It's all tulip mania and no one's gonna get into it. In four short years, we have 98% of hedge funds globally, and not all hedge funds, but this is just a, a random sampling. It may be less, it may be a little bit more, are like, yeah, we're getting into crypto and not like one to 2% allocation, 7%. And actually in all reality, they're really talking about 10%. So 17% of the polled CFOs admitted that their hedge funds could have 10% of their assets allocated to cryptos such as Bitcoin. I believe it'll be uh, higher than that as we see more inflation, as we see the different problems with quantitative easing, and as we see the different problems with the central banks just kind of messing up left and right. And uh, really, there's only one place you can get some real great asymmetrical returns, meaning that, yes, there's going to be risk, but for the amount of money that you put in to what you can actually get out, this is, in my opinion, what I feel is good for me, the place uh, to be. And then uh, just to finish this up, just as a real little recap, uh, investor PTJ, Paul Tudor Jones of Hedge Fund Tudor Investment said last year that he holds a small percentage of Bitcoin. Same thing with uh, Stan Druckenmiller. 
and that he's invested in the benchmark crypto. Uh, European hedge fund uh, Brevin Howard, U.S. funds firm Skybridge Capital, Fidelity, and ARK Investment have also uh, are the biggest names and are getting into crypto. And just real quick about Paul Tudor Jones. A year ago, he was talking about 1% to 2% in Bitcoin futures only, and he was kind of wishy-washy. Well, he just came out a couple of days ago and said, no, nope, I'm putting 5% of uh, my total portfolio into Bitcoin. And uh, he's like, that's what I think it is. He talked about Jerome Powell's making huge mistakes. He doesn't think he's going to last. And uh, that's where he's going. And this is a legend who predicted the 1987 uh, Wall Street crash and is uh, considered looked up by, by many uh, in the traditional space. So let me know what you think about this in the comment section. I just think that uh, where all the money is made is in the early days. And if you're here right now watching, you are so incredibly early. I, I, I can't even prep, I can't even really put into words. So when people are saying like, Rob, you're boring and you know, you just dollar cost ever, you should really go all in. You can, but I'm telling you, I mean, for me, I've been doing this since 2017 and the returns have been outstanding for me. So when I see these studies coming about and people are going to get in slowly, I'm like, just front run those guys and uh, I'll be okay. You do whatever you want to do. Your goals are not my goals. So let me just in the comment section. Let's move on to our next piece. So I thought this was interesting. Uh, also stolen from the guys over at uh, Trade the or at uh, Market Rebellion. So thank you. Uh, NASCAR driver Landon Castle to be paid in crypto in deal with Voyager. So what's going on here? Landon Castle will be the first NASCAR driver paid entirely in crypto. And we've already had, we've already seen sponsorships with the Bitcoin car where like, hey, here's some money, put this Bitcoin on your car and drive around, uh, just make a bunch of left turns. That's essentially NASCAR. But for this one, they're like, hey, we're going to pay you in crypto. And Castle's like, yeah, I like crypto. So this is a sponsorship deal with Voyager, uh, the Voyager brokerage, what I'm always talking about. And also, just real quick, if you are uh, looking for a place to find all the different uh, exchanges and wallets that uh, could actually you know, help you out, I have an exchange in wallet fees. There is a link in the description. It is a spreadsheet on Google, and these are all the ones that I've ever used and recommend and do not recommend. And also, the affiliate links, you can get up to $25 for uh, Bitcoin if you sign up. You don't have to use those affiliate links. You can go right there. You just won't get the uh, $20 or $10 sign up, whatever it is. And this goes everything from Voyager. And I just talk about all the different fees and all the different structures and everything else, all the way through like Cash App, Abra, Crypto.com, eToro. I don't really recommend eToro. And Coinbase, Coinbase Pro, don't recommend Coinbase. I mean, unless you're really new. So that's uh, just so you know, uh, it is there for you. Uh, you can just determine which one's best. So anyhow, so go back here. Uh, Castle, 31, first met Voyager CEO Steve Ehrlich at a crypto conference two years ago when Castle was speaking on a panel. He'd been pitching the sponsorship idea, idea ever since, which is pretty amazing. I mean, imagine like, talk about really just, you know, grinding away. Steve's like every so often like, hey man, you want to do a sponsorship? Hey man, want to do a sponsorship? And all of a sudden he's like, all right, let's do a sponsorship. That's really what it takes, determination and just uh, longevity to really get your message out there. So good for Steve and the Voyager team. Castle said, Voyager is paying in crypto. This is important. It's not like he's getting paid dollars just to talk about Voyager. He's like, he's paying crypto, which means he believes in crypto. The payment is a portfolio of digital assets that include Litecoin, and Bitcoin priced at market rates. What's interesting here is that it's a portfolio of digital assets that includes Litecoin and Bitcoin. My question is, what else are they paying him uh, as far as like cryptocurrencies? Let me know what you think in the comments section. That'll be interesting. Uh, and Castle says, I can trade it out right away before the market changes or hang on to it as the market goes up or goes down, carve out a little bit, pay my bills with it and hold the rest, which is some of these different places when I do sponsorships, like with like with uh, with iTrust and Crypto Trader, and then we just did one with um, uh, Unstoppable Domains, which is, that's the only ones I usually do. Uh, Unstoppable Domains will pay me in USDC, and what's great about that is I just put it into Voyager, and I get like nine percent interest. So, like if you're gonna pay me in like if if you're getting paid in dollars and you put it in your bank account, what's the point of that? I just stopped doing that. Every, every time I get money into my bank account for my businesses, it usually goes into Voyager or Celsius. Not everything, but a large majority because I get interest. So why wouldn't I do that? Castle said he's been invested in crypto for several years and seen significant gains to his personal portfolio, myself included. He said he has no hesitation in putting together a deal that will pay crypto instead of cold hard cash. I like this guy already. Give that guy a follow on Twitter. Uh, Bitcoin had a pro high profile debut, debut at Indianapolis 500 as the primary sponsor for Rhinus VK. VK 
Connor Daly and Ed Carpenter were all in attendance at the Bitcoin convention in Miami. It's interesting. And then lastly, Castle said, the big companies haven't done a lot of national ad campaigns, which is true. Have you ever seen anything on your local station as far as like crypto or an exchange or a currency? Never. I think the closest uh, we have, there really hasn't been anything that I can really, really think of. Mostly it's just been on social media. So for Voyager to go after a national ad campaign is a sign that the space is really starting to branch out. And this is why I'm a big believer in Voyager. So just so you know, uh, the Voyager token on my price prediction video, which you can find, just do a search, Digital Asset News price prediction, January 2021. Uh, this is the uh, diagram that I put in the video. And I just made some reasonable, I felt like predictions, but one that wasn't, which was really crazy, was Voyager. It was at 29 cents. And I said it was going to 30 bucks. And I and the probability I said was a nine, which is gonna be a hundred X. And people were like, that's insane. And uh, it did sound insane back then, but you gotta understand like the tokenomics, there's not that much. There's like, you know, 280 million, maybe 300 million tokens for Voyager. And then if you look at the network effect of how many people that are actually coming in, Metcalf's Law and all those things, you will look at, you know, like people coming in from like 60, 70,000 that they had in like December, January, all the way up to 1.6 million and probably up 2 million by now. And by the end of the year, they're expecting 10 million people. So if you're going to see like people using this and going forward, Voyager token could be a pretty big asset. But some people would say, well, Rob, you don't understand because like Voyager is a publicly traded company. So the stock will go up, not the Voyager token itself. Hold on. So real quick. There's this thing called a Voyager loyalty program. When you hold the Voyager token, uh, this is the new one that's coming, that is uh, in place as soon as the token swap happens, which I think is gonna be the end of this month. That's what Steve uh, has alluded to, maybe July, not for sure. But this is what we got. Uh, if you hold Voyager for like up to 500, and it, just real quick, anybody who, if you own one Voyager, just one Voyager, you get 7% interest. And all the different things that you hold in Voyager, you get interest and that's that fluctuates on a monthly rate. So why wouldn't people use that? So, but if you hold the Voyager token, uh, interest is seven across the board. Doesn't matter how many you have. Interest boosters are 0.5, 1% and 1.5%. So if you're getting 9% on USDC or whatever it is, you're gonna get 10.5% just by holding some Voyager. Also on your trades, you're gonna get cash back 1X, 2X and 3X, depending on your, on your level. Refer a friend, right now it's at 30, could be 35 or 40 depending withdrawal fee savings cash back on the debit card once that debit card comes there's no reason for me to have a bank quite honestly and i'll probably be switching over also you get 0 0.1 0 0.2 and 0 0.3 uh it's free and there's desktop access so which is all coming and then real quick uh the cashback rewards on trades for every trade executed on the voyager app our smart order router achieves what is called price improvement Price improvement means that Voyager scours the market to fill your order, which beats the quoted price in the app. For the Explorer and Navigator tiers, you'll receive 2x or 3x the price improvement normally given to customers. So if you're going to be trading into crypto, why wouldn't you just get into Voyager? It makes a lot of sense. It's super easy to use. They're going to, they're going to have a desktop app. It's on my phone right now. I use it all the time. They have uh, uh, limit orders. They have dollar cost average orders, which I just put in like buy this every single day and then off you go. So for me, I think it's going to be a pretty big deal, but only time will tell. And then some people will say, you know, these, uh, these orders and these rates, I find a better rate over on, on, on this, um, exchange or that exchange, then go to those exchanges and use it. But I got to tell you for the ones that I've used 90% of the time, it's good. Is it always 100%? No, it's not. So if you want to go through 10, 20 exchanges and find a little, you know, a dollar, $10, $13, whatever it is, uh, go right ahead. I just don't have time for that. And that's why I'm a big believer in Voyager. So, and and uh, of course I talk about the team. So let me know what you think in the comments section. I'm sure I got a lot of comments about that one. Let's move on to our last piece, which is Mark Cuban. So Mark Cuban, uh, we did a story about him about he was he's into DeFi and he's really you know really ecstatic about it great we're excited to have you here mark fantastic but uh you know this is just one of those things where something just didn't go right so what happened so if you don't know um iron finance is the company behind the titan token this is uh right here this is the iron dot finance website so 
Iron Finance is the company behind the Titan token. Uh, the main goal, goal of the outfit is to provide a dollar pig stable coin known as iron. So you got the Titan, which is the token, and the stable coin, which is iron. Iron stable coin, right? Titan token, Titan token operates on Polygon. Who's a big believer in Polygon? Mark Cuban. He's already talked about how much of a big believer he is. Iron stable value, iron, the stable, stable coin, is backed by a variety of different collaterals, including USDC, the stable coin of Coinbase. And this is what I want to make mention of. Uh, iron, the stable coin, is 75% pegged to USDC, uh, but the other 25% was pegged to Titan, which is what you get as far as like yield farming. So Titan, the token, that was 25%. So here's what happened. Developers distribute Titan to liquidity providers to stake in various liquidity pools. So if you're going to give them uh, some type of, of liquidity, they're going to give you Titan, a bunch of it. Well, it wasn't worth too much. And all of a sudden it went to 65 bucks. So people were getting paid in Titan, which is worth a lot of money. This staking allows liquidity providers to yield profits off of transactions and ensure that there is liquidity for their investors looking to buy Titan. Mark Cuban was a liquidity provider staking his Titan on the exchange quick swap and he was getting a ton of uh, uh titan tokens uh because he had a bunch of them so uh, makes pretty sense cuban provides titan and die another stable coin on the platform when somebody buys titan with die cuban nets 100 percent of the transaction profits doing nothing making a lot of money yield farming good for him now here's the problem the plunge took place after titan reached 65 bucks before retreating to 60. Whales or large holders of Titan, which is what you always have to watch out for in cryptocurrency, just saying Doge, watch out, saw this price gaping, gapping, as enough of a reason to cash out. As soon as whales started offloading their Titan, others began to panic sell. This is my question, and I'm going to have Alex answer this. Is a price fluctuation from $65 to $60 enough for all the whales to go, I'm out of here. This is way too much. Like, have they never been in cryptocurrency? That just seems kind of odd to me. Excess Titan tokens, oh, this is with the domino effect. Excess Titan tokens began hitting the market, which caused Titan prices to drop off. Panic sales continued, excess tokens poured in, and prices tanked from $60 to, let's take a look. This is for uh, Titan. Titan token is now worth from $65 to 0.000000. Even, it's not even, it's, it's nothing. It's a nothingness. That sucks for everybody holding those bags. All right. Uh, where are we? The iron stable coin is also being thrown from its peg with values crashing from a dollar to 69 cents, which makes sense because 75% is the USDC with 25% the Titan. So it's probably down in the dumps. Let's see. Actually, it's uh, 73 cents. Makes sense, right? 75%, 25%. Okay, got it. And then it should be made clear, this does not seem to be a rug pull scam. Not all the different developers just took off with the money, but all the whales sold. So it's still you still lost a ton of money. Cuban has taken to Twitter today to address some of the many questions about the fall of Titan. He denies he was the whale in question. Oh, I'm sure. Saying he got hit like everybody else, which is weird because he says he got hit like everybody else, yet he also said that he got out before everybody else. So which one is it? Uh, the Titan crypto has lost over 1.75 billion in total value locked on Polygon. The company is planning on somehow reimbursing holders. So we will see. So there's some things that just, I, look, some things to me just don't make sense for this one. So I need somebody smarter than me, which let's get Alex in here. Alex Mascioli was head of, uh, of uh, institutional investment for, for Bquant Services. Now he is the co-founder of Trade the Chain. He does a lot with uh, farming, liquidity providing for different uh, areas, and he talks to all these guys. So let's get him in here to get some of the insider information. All right, everybody, we got Alex Mascioli on the show because he's one of the guys that actually does these things. He's a big or a, a semi-large uh, liquidity provider in different exchanges. So Alex, thanks for coming on. So I got two questions for you. We just read the article, we took a look at it. First of all, do you think that uh, whales seeing the price of Titan go from 65 to 60 would cause them to start panic selling and, and that would just, uh, you know, just implode? And then also, uh, do you think that uh, Mark Cuban got out in time? And if you saw these types of things happening with, with what the TVL for that you do for liquidity provider, would you have said, you know what, time for me to get out too? Uh, because you do these things, I don't do these things. So uh, Alex, thanks for coming on, take it away. 
Yeah, no, thanks for having me, Rob. Uh, you know, f- first of all, I'm not a, a professional liquidity provider player. Uh, I do like to do it, but it is a full time job for those that are serious about it. And, you know, what happened yesterday with uh, with Titan is a good example of why it's a full time job. Um, so, you know, first of all, I, to the first question of uh, would the whales have realistically sold at 65 or, or at 60 when they saw it go down five dollars? I think for anybody who's been around the block and does this sort of uh, role playing in crypto, um, the writing was on the wall that the velocity of price action over the last couple of weeks with Titan Iron was so much so and the total uh, value lockup uh, had increased so much. I mean, this is a super young project and it had billions of dollars in lockup. So I think anybody, you know, the whales who had their money playing behind this were grabbing all the APY they could. Um, they saw that it was probably getting to a point where it was becoming overvalued. And so uh, a tick down $5 was enough to say, listen, I think uh, the ice is beginning to crack. Let's get off the lake before we fall through. Um, you know, that being said, it, 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 that's the risk that people play with a type of coin like this. We have a coin that's a 75% stable coin and 25% uh, stable by algorithmic uh, price movements in another coin. Yeah. Um, you know, that's, that's a roulette wheel every day of the week. Do I think Mark Cuban got out? Well, listen, it, 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 I, do, I don't know. I don't know, but you know anybody who didn't get out is um, uh, that's high profile is probably not going to say that they didn't get out. So, uh, you know, teach their own. Teach their own. You know, I wonder how fast because if you're Mark Cuban, you're a, a billionaire. You're probably not that guy who's sitting behind the computer screen going, you know, checking everything. I'm sure he's got a couple other things to do during the day. Maybe he just says, "Hey, you handle this. Make sure it doesn't do this, this, and this." Maybe when somebody was, was looking at all the prices and all the, all the selling going, wait, 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 something bad's going on. Mark, this is what's happening. This looks not, not too good. Sell it all. Boom. And that could probably be it. Maybe that could be it. Well, here, 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 now you're raising some, some interesting conspiracy theories, right? So <laughs> anybody who was watching the chart yesterday who happened to be in this thing saw that the downward trajectory of price was rapid, okay? And it took no breaks. It took no breaks along the way. Oh, okay. How All right. Because I didn't see it, but I mean, because I, 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 I know you've taken a look at it, but how fast was it? Are we talking about like an we're hour? Talking hours. We're talking, we're talking to mere hours. Hours. And, okay. And so let's, let's, let's dig into Mark Cuban's life for a moment here. Sure. You're Mark, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're Mark Cuban. Um, you're, you're probably, you know, it's the, it's the afternoon on a, on a Wednesday, you might be in your private jet somewhere. You might be down at the, uh, you know, NBA team court that you own shooting hoops. Who knows? Who knows? I'm pretty sure you're right. He doesn't have anybody watching the computer. So somebody who he does have, it tries to reach him now, you know, Hey, yeah, it's Bob in the office. Can you get Mark on the line? <laughs> sure. He's traveling. Let me call him. We'll get a hold. And it's probably a couple hours later that Mr. Cuban gets back to the guy he put in charge of DeFi, right? He has a lot going on. Yeah. Um, that being said, that's why I don't think he probably got out because <laughs> of the, of the rapid uh, uh, time decay and price drop. I have an alternative theory. I think Mark Cuban his wife told him probably go to the store, get some milk. He's in the line at Walmart on the self-checkout because he's a busy guy. He's at Walmart going, okay, I got this, this uh, the 2%. What's this on my cell phone? Oh, I'll be damned. Oh, I should get out. Get out. That's probably what happened. <laughs> now, funny enough, um, I spoke to uh, a couple of hedge funds yesterday uh, evening um, in regards to Titan and called up some uh, whale investors. And they all said the same story. Oh, don't worry about Alex. Yeah, I saw that. I got out. <laughs> First of all, I know for a fact one investor was like in the middle of the ninth hole on a golf course, right? The yeah. other, the other one of the hedge funds, he was out in his house in the Hampton. So who knows who's telling the truth? I think they're all full of it, anyhow. But you, but you got to save face. You got to save face, right? That makes sense. Okay, Alex, I don't want to take more of your time. Any uh, words of wisdom for? I mean, something to take away from this. What do you what do you say to the investor out there? Yeah, make sure you understand what uh, part of crypto you're investing in. Understand it fully. Um, and, uh, you know, go to danteachescrypto.com to get the basics if you don't have them yet. Obviously, king of the show. All right, Alex, thanks for coming on. I appreciate it. Let's jump back.
All right, so I hope that cleared it up. Thanks, Alex, for coming on because I just didn't get it. That makes a lot more sense to me. So look, if you made it all this way to the end, first of all, thanks. I appreciate it. Uh, give it a thumbs up if you liked it, found some value in the video. Also consider subscribing. A lot of things we talk about on this channel um, is time sensitive. A lot of things we talk about over at Dan Clips are more for the advancements in digital assets and also for the new products that are coming down, which we just covered Card Starter, which is on the Cardano ecosystem for their smart contracts. So check that out, Dan Clips, links in the description. That's it for today. Thanks so much. See you on the next one.